Hey guys, James with Newbie Drone here, and today we're going to be checking out how to build the brand new Leviathan 5 inch racing frame from Newbie Drone. For this build, the parts we're going to be using are a DYS F4 Pro flight controller board, LD power motors, M2306 2450KV, DYS 30 amp BL Heli S D shock compatible ESCs, Spectrum receiver, or you could use a FR Sky XSR instead. Emax Pagoda 2 VTX antenna, TBS Unify Pro VTX, and a Runcam Eagle FPV camera. Let's go ahead and look at the box. This is a nice 80s themed box we got going on here that was designed by our team pilot Levi. Open it up. First thing you guys will notice is you get a nice rubberized newbie drone lipo strap in it. The upper part of the frame that holds the camera is going to come pre-assembled like this for you. You've got the X-Style arms, some antenna tubing, the upper and lower plates, and all the hardware for the kit. So we've got our various bolts here, we've got standoffs and nuts, and then we've got the battery grip right here. What I like to do now is go ahead and get all my hardware out and put it into one container so it's easy to get to. Take the bottom plate that doesn't have any of the press nuts in it, Grab one of the shorter bolts in the kit. We're gonna go ahead and put it in that corner piece. Grab a leg. Line it up and put it on. Grab your top plate. Put that over onto the slip nut. Grab your hex tool. Snug that up just a little. Don't tighten it too much. Just leave it loose because we're gonna put the other legs in. And we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other sides. Go ahead and take four of the longer bolts and put them through the holes for the flight controller to mount to and grab a black standoff and thread that on like so and repeat that three more times. Make sure those are all nice and snug. Should look just like that. Grab your flight controller and we're gonna go ahead and open that up. Comes with some standoffs. Our kit already comes with it, so you don't need it. A manual and schematic layout that's important. Hold on to that. XT60 connector, the flight controller itself, and a beeper. We're not going to be using that in this build, but if you need it, there it is. The first thing I'm going to be doing is putting the flight controller in a little clamp, and we're going to be pre tinning all the solder points that we're going to be using for the build. Now we have the basic thing soldered up like the ESC's power and ground and the signal and ground. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram. So on the right side of the board that's where you're going to have your connections for your receiver. Uh, on the other side you're going to have the connections for your VTX and your camera. So because I'm using a spectrum receiver I'm going to be using the 3.3 solder pad, the S bus, and a ground. So just to go over this again, here we have our S bus signal connection, down here we have our 3.3 voltage for power, and then right below we have ground for the receiver.
So to go over all the solder points for the VTX and camera, we have the two top being the grounds, the second two being five volts each, the left side being video out for the VTX, the right side being video in that comes in from the camera, and then right below that we have a TX6 port which is going to be the port we're using for smart audio with the VTX. Now we're going to take the XT60 connector and solder that onto the flight controller board. Ground is on the left so we're just going to hold that down, let it get heated up. Now this next step is optional, but since we're using ESCs that are individual, we don't want these pins that stick out here to ground to the carbon. Normally these pins are used for an all-in-one ESC board that this stacks on, but because of this frame design it sits really low. So we're going to go ahead and snip these pins to make sure they don't ground. These grommets are a little tricky to install, so the best way I've found to install them is first you start by pushing it in. Then you'll take some tweezers and just use the tip to push the bottom lip into the board and it'll go in nicely like that. Just make sure it's flush on each side, giving you a nice even spread. Now we can take one side plate off of the main body of the frame and this way we're going to use this side plate as reference for spacing on the wires to the flight controller. So for reference this bigger curve section is going to be the front where the camera points. So if we set that on the quad uh, you can kind of just hold it up there as a reference just to see right on the side where the spacing is going to need to be for the wires coming off of the ESC. So this is going to let us gauge uh, how long we have to cut the wires for the ESCs so that we make sure they can go up to the front and then connect. So just keep that in mind when you're building it because if you try and go in uh, normally from behind going here to here, it's obviously not going to work because of the way that this frame is specifically designed. Before we put any of the ESCs or motors on, I'm going to wire up the receiver since it's going to be on this side where the wires are going to cross over. This first bottom one is going to be the ground. Now 
Next will be our power. And at the top will be our S bus signal. After that, I like to twist it together just to make it nice and neat. Now we're gonna wire up our camera. So go ahead and take the harness that comes with the camera. And basically what we're gonna do is, the camera's gonna sit right up here. So we only need the wire to be about this long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the cable right there. Then you'll wanna strip the ends of these wires. Then I like to tin the ends of the cables. First, we're gonna solder ground for the camera. Now solder and power below that. And then video below that. Take your cables and give them a little twist. Now we're gonna take our VTX harness, and this is a good length already, so we really don't have to cut it much shorter. So we're gonna cut the opposite end that doesn't plug into the VTX. Go ahead and clip that off. And we're gonna do the same thing and strip all these wires. Solder your ground on top. Power second. Then the video out. And then last, our smart audio. Go ahead and give this a nice twist. Now we can start installing the motors on the frame. So I'll take one motor, sit down there, grab the bolts that come with your motor, flip it over, throw one in, and you're gonna wanna line that up with the motor. And do that for all four sides. Once your motor's installed, you can grab an ESC. I like to kind of lay it on the board where I want the ESC to sit, and that way it'll let me gauge how long I need the wires to be and where I need to cut them. So about right there is where I'm gonna to wanna to cut them. So I'll grab my dikes and just cut like so, and then do the same thing for the other two wires. Once those are cut the length, now we need to strip the ends. And again, I like to tin the edges. I will also pre-tin the ESC ends. Take your ESC, line it up on the arm where you want it to be, and then you can use something heavy to just to hold it down. I'm gonna just use these pairs of scissors, get it lined up how I want it to sit. Take the center wire and just solder it down onto it. And then do the same for the other two sides.
After you finish soldering the motor to the ESC, the ESCs come with this extra little piece of heat shrink. I'm gonna go ahead and run that over it. And even though the main ESC already is heat shrinked, the wires where the ESC connects to the motor are exposed. So just to play it safe, you wanna have those covered. So that way the solder on the bottom or any moisture doesn't hit them and short it out, especially the bottom to the carbon plate. Now I'm gonna take a heat gun, or if you guys don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter, this works just as well. And I'm gonna shrink the heat shrink on the ESC. To secure the ESC to the arm, what I like to do is take some black electrical tape. I'll pull out a little strip. And then I will just put it over the ESC like so. Make one side go under the arm. And then wrap it back around nice and tightly. Now we're gonna solder on the signal and ground for the ESC to the flight controller. They are both going to connect right here on these two little dots. The left one is gonna be your signal and the right one ground. So take the black and white cable and you just wanna run it around the standoff and have it to be about mm, that length just so you have a little extra in case you don't strip it correctly the first time. Go ahead and snip it with your dikes. And then you'll go ahead and strip the ends of these. And you're gonna to wanna to strip them really short. You don't need a lot of contact. And I'm going to tin these as well. Take the ground and solder it on. Do the same with the signal. Now take your power cable run it around, measure where you need to cut. So right about there. Tin this as well. Run the power cable around the standoff right on top of the power lead and go ahead and solder that down on. Run the ground cable around and cut that to length. Strip that as well. Tin the tip, run that around, lay it on top of the ground and heat it up and solder that to the ground tab. When you're finished soldering all the ESCs to the arms, you should have something that looks like this with all the power and ground wires coming in on the sides and then connecting to the flight controller board. That way the upper body has nice clearance to connect down into the middle. Now we're gonna move on to installing the FPV camera into the top part of the frame. So take your frame with one of the sides off, grab your camera, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just slip it in like that. And you're gonna wanna line up the holes on the side of this with the holes in the camera. And then grab these little clear washers that we include in the kit and one of the bolts that comes with your camera, whichever one fits best for you. Slide that in. Now I'll go ahead and do it to the other side. Take the harness for your camera on your frame and go ahead and plug that in at this point. So I actually had to end up taking the casing off of the receiver because the way the receiver had the antennas going out 
the side like that it was too wide for the back of this frame so I just took the casing off rotated the antennas and now I'm gonna put a little piece of heat shrink over this now we can heat shrink this After that's cooled off, now we're gonna take the antennas and we're gonna use the plate and we're gonna run them through the back holes in the plate. Just like so. Up like that. It's gonna sit like this. And now we'll just get a piece of double-sided tape again. Push that plate into the side, making sure it lines up flush. Grab your other side plate, put that in place, start installing the bolts on the side. Take your other long remaining bolts in the kit and we're going to put them through the bottom plate to attach to the body. Now we're going to install the antenna tubing. What I like to do is take the tube, hold it in place, just measure out how long it needs to be for the antenna, and then I go just a little beyond where it needs to be and I'll cut it right there. Hold that in place and then you just insert it nicely until it's flush at the bottom and that one's done and then just do the same exact thing for the other side. The last step we're going to be doing is installing the VTX antenna and screws. So I have some nylon Phillips screws I'm going to be using to put into there to go into the SMA connector. Now we're going to install the VTX antenna, so go ahead and screw that on. Once you have that screwed on, you want to align those two threaded holes so that we can put some nylon Phillips bolts into there. Now we're going to insert some nylon bolts into the two holes on the side of the SMA connector for the VTX antenna. Once those are on, we can screw on our VTX antenna. Last step we're going to do is install a newbie drone LiPo strap. Run that under the flight controller. And there you go, we have one built Leviathan.